right, good afternoon from Photo Photo Gallery. I'm Pamela Waldrop, uh, president of our Photographic Collective. I'm very, very excited to welcome you to our first ever Zoom reception, live from our newly expanded gallery. The fabulous 16th National Photo uh, Photography Competition exhibition is on view in our gallery and online through February 27th. There will be a limited entry photo photo gallery reception from four to six following the Zoom reception today. Congratulations to all of the winners and all of the accepted artists. We also want to thank all of the artists who submitted to our competition. It's much appreciated. Art is more essential than ever. We really appreciate your support. I also want to send out a Big, huge thank you to Wendy Curtis and Tom Northrup, owners of Huntington Art Center for generously sponsoring our competition. Photo Photo Gallery artist Eileen Novak has put together a spectacular slideshow of the entire exhibition. And gallery artist Paul Mealy will be giving you a live tour of the gallery, so stay tuned. We are honored that our juror award-winning photographer Karen Kleindienst has joined us from Baltimore to share her selection process and what a huge undertaking. She had the challenging task of selecting 30 final photographic works out of 667 images submitted and then awarding first, second, and third place winners. Karen will be making commentary as you view a slideshow of all of the accepted images. So first I want to uh, thank you, Eileen, uh, for sharing the screen. Congratulations to our award winners. The first place award of $300 goes to Amy Broderick for her image, Prism. And I'm looking forward to hearing Karen speak about this piece. Congratulations. The second place award, of $200 goes to Glenn DeRosa for his image, Notes 4. I wish you could see this piece in person. The texture is absolutely extraordinary. And the third place award goes to Timothy Trace for his image, Lumens. I am looking forward to hearing our jurors speak about all of these images. Let me tell you a little bit about our juror, Karen Kleindens. Karen is a Baltimore, Maryland-based artist using photography to explore the themes of place, nature, and the environment. Inspired by the 19th century landscape paintings of the Hudson River School, she creates richly layered landscapes that combine the real with the imagined. I'm gonna just interrupt myself here for a minute. If you haven't seen her work, you have to check out her website. It's extraordinary, it's gorgeous. Her work has been exhibited at Maryland Art Place, Soho Photo Gallery, University of Maryland Global College, the Center for Fine Art Photography, Washington County Museum of Fine Arts, and the Big Museum of American Art. In her 2018, in 2018, her series, The Emotional Landscape, was exhibited in the Griffin Museum of Photography. Her work is in the collection of the National Park Service. Karen Kleindens is a graduate of the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore. In 2004, she was awarded a Platt Clove Artist Residency at the Catskills Center for Conservation and Development in New York. And in 2006, a National Park Service Artist Residency at the Acadia National Park in Maine, wow. In 2015, she was awarded an Individual Artist Award from the Maryland State Council. And she was a critical mass 200 finalists in 2018 and 2019. You can see why we wanted Karen to be our juror for our show. Um, Kleindens teaches at the Creative Alliance in Baltimore, John Hopkins University Odyssey Program and at her Baltimore studio. So thank you, Karen very, very much for being our fantastic juror. The exhibition is just absolutely wonderful. Um, I wanna thank you uh, 
all of our, our supportive Zoom participants. Stay tuned after Karen's commentary because we will host a Q&A afterwards. And um, while you're watching, please send us your questions in our chat while she's presenting. We would love your, your feedback. Thank you. And now, would you please welcome Karen Kleindens? Great. Well, uh, thanks, Pam. I um, want to thank you uh, for asking me to jury the 16th uh, National Photography Competition. Um, it was such a pleasure to, um, during these really unusual times, to sort of immerse myself in looking at thinking about and selecting all the photographs for um, this exhibition. And um, it was really hard to, um, it was a really hard task to select just 30 images from all 66, seven, 667 that were submitted. Um, there were really so many compelling and beautiful images um, that were submitted and it was really difficult for me to eliminate um, images that I had formed an attachment to. Um, um, as I was curating the exhibit, I was really conscious of selecting a diverse group of images that as a whole tell a story about the extraordinary year where we've experienced and how we've reacted to the pandemic. Um, each image in the exhibit is a conversation with each other. As I, look at the, as I looked at the whole, I saw overarching themes of isolation, loneliness, identity, memories, longing, beauty, and ultimately hope. Um, I'm going to go through, um, we're going to go through the exhibit as it's sequenced in the gallery and talk a little bit about, and I'll talk about a little bit about each image and why I included it and how it fits into the overarching narrative that um, was created by the exhibit. So we're going to go through the slideshow now, I think. <laughs> so um, yeah, oh good, Elaine. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so um, this was um, Looking Ahead um, by Joan Weiss, and I thought this was a, a natural start to the exhibit. Um, I chose this portrait because it tells a story of what we are personally experiencing each and every day. Um, although although the, the face in the portrait is partially hidden behind the mask, through the subject eyes we can see worry and anxiety. And I also just really love the, the color. <laughs> um, so you can go to the next. Elaine. Elaine, do you want to advance to the next one? Okay. So this was, um, um, so, uh, so much of our lives um, during the pandemic has been experienced in interior and intimate spaces. As a result, I was drawn to uh, two images by um, Amy Broderick for showing us the tender, quiet moments of our closest relationships that are experienced in these spaces. Of the two, I chose Prism here um, for first place. In Prism, the young boy's portrait emerges from darkness, illuminated by a present of light outside of the frame. It's an image of hope that I that we all need during these challenging times. So Elaine, you can advance to the next. Um, the, the image mate um, shows the intimacy of our closest relationships and just the, the care that we give to each other um, during these times um, with a home haircut. And I just really also loved the, the point of view, but it, it's just a really tender moment. And I think in combination with, with, um, with the first prism image. Um, and I also noticed that there are also really small little intimate images as well in the gallery. And, and um, they're just so touching. And I think we all need that about right now. So Elaine, you can advance. Um, so this is also uh, untitled by Jesse Egner's um, disidentification series takes us into uh, another intimate, one of the most intimate and personal spaces for this portrait. Um, I selected this image for the color and the playful humor used to explore and question um, identity. Um, and I hope if Jesse is here today that we can um, hopefully he can talk a little bit uh, more about his work and this, this series of images, this series um, during the Q&A when we go through the, um, the one through, through the exhibit. So Elaine, you can advance to the next. Um, many uh, photographers have been exploring self-portraiture as we've spent so much time in solitude in the past year. So I was drawn to um, Erica Caspi's intimate triptych after from her self series. Um, each image in the triptych 
richly explores the self on its most basic level. So you can advance to the next. Um, Dan McCormick's Lenoir was um, chosen for its uh, classic Renaissance pose and use of light. Uh, but Mass clearly puts this image in the here and now. Uh, the spider and use of light give, gives the image both beauty and a sense of danger. Okay, and then we sort of, I sort of continued with the classic Renaissance pose uh, and beautiful use of light with Marissa Complay's Tatina uh, lunch. Um, I was drawn to the rich colors and light and how it was a perfect transition from the previous figurative work. Uh, the Boxer by Cheryl Guerrero is um, such a beautiful example of composition, color, and lighting. And it also serves um, as a memory of travel to places that we are now restricted from. And hopefully we'll all be able to get back to places like Cuba. So um, Here by Heart is another image by Erica Pospeeds from her Unborn series. And, um, I'm not sure of Erica's own narrative about this image, but I created my own narrative from this image about isolation, that it shows isolation and restriction. So you can, yes. uh, because of the lockdown, uh, many photographers have been exploring the classic still life. Uh, Pestilence from Plagues of Egypt an excellent example of a classic still life, but with references to the time we're living in. So this is just such a beautiful classic still life, but it also has a, you know some references for the time we're living in. Um, and I um, just the uh, and I, I love the the symbol of bread in that image. Karen, yes. If I could also interrupt for a minute uh, to, to say to Adrienne, because Karen has, is in Baltimore and she hasn't actually seen the show itself. She's seen the, the digital images. Your presentation is gorgeous. It's a floated image. Uh, it's absolutely spectacular, so. Um, yeah, here we are. Okay, um, so um, for, so I selected two images uh, by Glenn DeRosa. Um, the Note 6A is, um, is beautiful, um, they, they work, uh, both of the images work together and they're from the same series. And um, I, I just loved both of those images so much. I loved the entire series and it was really hard for me to, to select um, select the image, um, you know, the, the images of what I, that I wanted to include. But I really wanted to include this treasure chest image because it sort of sets up the next, um, next image by Glenn. But the, this treasure chest, chest holds all these beautiful little notes um, that were given to Glenn um, from you know, his parents and other family members. And um, they're just kind of just really humorous. And um, they're just, um, they're, they're the kind of notes that um, you wouldn't necessarily save, but Glenn did. And, I, I, and I'm sure he's so thankful to, to get back to those notes. So we can uh, advance to the next um, image so we can see the lens. Uh, but I just really, I mean, uh, I say, have saved so many little notes and cards and, um, from my husband over the years. So I, um, I just really appreciate this sort of sense of, of um, you know, and they're, they're actually not very sentimental notes, um, but they're just humorous and they just um, give you um, they're just really wonderful little little notes from our uh, from the past, and it sort of speaks of photography's unique ability to capture memories and, and moments in time. So you can advance to the next um, garlic um, scape is by um, Marissa Complay, and um, like images before it, this image shows us um, shows us um, beauty in the everyday. And it's just a beautiful classic black and white image with um, this wonderful sense of light. And the garlic really emerges from the darkness. And as our own personal worlds have been so limited, finding and creating beauty in something so ordinary is something we all need right now. And Lumens by Timothy Trace was selected for third place. Um, in the past year, we have primarily viewed and experienced photography and each other virtually 
and it's easy for, to forget the photograph as a physical object. As a result, I selected this image from uh, Trace's Lumen series for its cameraless, transient, handcrafted beauty, and I just wish I could experience this um, print in person because I'm sure it's gorgeous. In advance. Um, Danger Image by Natalie McGuire is, um, I, I love this, uh, the image um, Danger by Natalie McGuire. Um, it just says everything about this moment in time. Um, I selected this image for the dichotomy between the tree and nature and the sign of danger. And we don't normally associate uh, nature with something dangerous, but there are many signs of danger in nature, especially this year. In advance. Um, this is another danger slash nature image, Beehives at Baxter Farm uh, by Julie Mahali. Uh, and this image also explores our, um, our impact on, on the, the landscape. You can advance. Oh, you can advance, okay. And then Fade by, Ju um, I love, um, Fade by Julia Forrest. And I, by the way, I love, <laughs> I love the artist's name. Um, this pictorial image really spoke to me. Um, I was drawn to this image uh, because the figure becomes part of the landscape um, it both emerges and recedes. And uh, to me, it speaks about the power of self within our surroundings. And in the context of the pandemic, you can also read this imagery as a commentary on our isolation. And the next image is um, Selen by Nadine Cox, uh, Goxen. And this image um, really takes me to a place of serenity um, in the, in this um, context of the pandemic, this image also says something about a suspended moment of time and how our lives have all been on hold. Elaine, you can advance. Um, <clears throat> we now go from you know a close-up intimate image to a long shot with this, um, I'm assuming it's a drone image, shot with a drone, um, and this is Street Geometry by Pablo Estrada. And the point of view is from above looking down and you see the patterns that are created in this urban environment. Outside of the vehicles, you don't, you, in this image, you don't see any people in this urban landscape. In the pandemic context, this is another image about isolation, but isolation in, a, in the urban environment. Can I advance? And uh, I selected this image because it paired so wonderfully with the previous image. Uh, the point of view here um, is from above, is from below looking above in a mirror. And you can see the distorted patterns created by the interaction of the people and through the rabbit hole. Um, it's a dreamlike image that takes me to a place, to a time when we could all be in um, group settings. And you can advance to the next. Um, continuing with the sort of pattern theme here uh, is the mixed media piece, Wasting Away from Kimberly Bass. Um, I selected this image because it was mixed media uh, using photography. And I was drawn to the interaction of textures created from the old uh, book pages and photographic images of a decaying structure. Um, it's sort of a life, uh, the life cycle of a tree. And I I'm also wish I could see this image um, in, in person, this collage. You can advance. Um, this is, um, as a tree and winter lover, I was really drawn to snowberries um, for the point of view and the rich patterns that were created. Um, that pop of red, the pop of red from the berries keeps your eye moving through the image. And it brought up uh, childhood memories of laying in the snow under a tree and looking up. Advance. Um, now we're going to move to um, an opposite point of view. Um, this image, in combination with the title "The Smokers" by Johanna Grasso, immediately creates a story in my mind. Um, I imagine two people isolated in the restricted um, interior of that car, going nowhere. In the context of the of this moment in time, it says sort of everything. And you can advance to the next. 
Um, Central Park by Judith Evanstein explores the concepts of wilderness and the uh, an urban environment. I love the dichotomy of the two worlds in one image. Um, as our ability to travel has been restricted, finding wilderness close by um, takes us to a place of serenity. And I also note that I, I ha have been exploring similar concepts with my, my work recently. Um, the next um, is um, as a landscape photographer, I couldn't help but include some classic beautiful landscapes in this exhibit. I was particularly drawn to the minimal Minimalism of Wetted Rocks by Peter Hewitt. Uh, Hugh. um, the serenity captured in this um, image takes us to another place in time, and we all need that right now. We can dance to the next. Um, Night Stands number two by um, Dave Hansen was another classic, beautiful landscape that I just had to include in this exhibit. The long, beautiful shadows and gorgeous color in a wide open space is the calm place that we all like to be in right now. And um, for this uh, image, so we went from an expansive landscape to a suburban landscape of fence by Shannon Randall. Uh, this image really captures the restriction and isolation, isolation that we've uh, been experiencing even from our closest neighbors. And um, for most of the past year, we've been experiencing and seeing a landscape from, interior, from the interior looking out. So the uh, train portal by Carmen Schaefer is an image of longing for the outdoors. And um, I initially um, read um, The Daily Grind by Paul Murray as an image about isolation with the single person in the window of, of the train. But when I look more closely, I see this as an image of escape to another place. And I also, uh, so I wanted to end the exhibit with uh, Way Home by Michael Corthell. And this beautiful dreamlike image is, I think, one of um, possibility and, and hopefully our freedom. <laughs> So I wanted to thank every, I cannot thank enough the, the many artists who submitted photographs for this, um, for the 16th national competition. Uh, during a challenging time, your images really spoke to me on an emotional level. Uh, putting together the exhibit of single images from different artists in conversation um, created a commentary on this extraordinary moment in time. And I really wanna thank you for sharing Okay. okay, here we go. Thank you so much, Karen, for, for sharing your selection process, uh, what your thoughts were and how to create um, a show. Uh, those of us at the gallery uh, have had many conversations about what goes into selecting a show. And I, I that at some point, um, it's about the work, but it's also about how the work is talking to each other and creating a, a voice as a show as well as individual pieces. So uh, what I'd like to do now, um, I, I'm really interested in, in the artists who are here, if you'd like to, to speak to us a little bit uh, about your own work, or if you have questions for Karen, uh, we can um, probably pull up your work or we can also do a live view as you're talking. Uh, I know there are several people here. Uh, oh, I forgot to say this in the beginning because I find this fascinating. We have, I think, two people, two artists in the show who are from Long Island, uh, one local here in Huntington and the other one close by. There are maybe a handful from New York State, but probably at least 11 or more people are sprinkled in states across the entire United States. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty awesome. Um, on our labels on the wall, not only uh, is your name and title listed, we've also listed where you're from, uh, the dimensions of your work, the price of your work, and uh, uh, the media that you used. Uh, so um, if you, if you would uh, like to ask a question, just uh, put your hand up, please, and we'll unmute you, and uh, we'd love to hear, get some input here. Anyone? 
Can, can everyone hear me okay? Yes? Um, let me ask this question then. Um, did, did anyone have any intent in your images that might have been a little different perspective than what Karen spoke about uh, when she talked about your piece? Sure, I'll, I'll begin if you like. My name's Adrian. Okay, awesome. Hi, so I'm Adrian Katniss, um, talking about intent in the piece. My piece was Pestilence from Plagues of Egypt. So um, that was inspired, that whole series was inspired by the pandemic because um, I was raised in a born again Christian upbringing um, that I no longer hold to. And one of the stories uh, from the Old Testament that I was very familiar with was the idea of the plagues of Egypt, um, where in an attempt to get uh, the Israelites freed from the Egyptians, God sent this sequence of plagues. Um, and while obviously it's terrible that anyone would be enslaved, I, I think it raises a lot of questions right now, the moment we're in with the pandemic, um, thinking about divine, uh, the divine hand in pandemics or disease, you know, whenever we're in a crisis of um, disease or, or other natural disaster, you know, people start asking philosophical questions about God and God's role. So what I did for this series is I looked at those 10 plagues um, in the book of Ezekiel and then I, or Exodus rather, I'm sorry, I then um, interpreted each plague using only what I had in the house and what I could find at the grocery store. So this was in the early part of the pandemic. So um, I would get food items at the grocery store. I would get props that I had and slowly I would build, you know, and of course it's impossible to let's say recreate an entire plague of locusts in your apartment. So how do you do that? So my process involved using a lot of symbolism and a lot of food and household objects as stand-ins for these kind of biblical almost archetypal uh, associations that we have with plague and pestilence and disease. So that was a little bit about the process for my work. Thank you very much. And again, if you came in late and you saw that Kimberly Bass's name was on there, uh, her, uh, Kimberly, um, Adrian's name is correctly on our slideshow and on our walls. And uh, uh, we will be sure that that is changed in our PowerPoint presentation. Great, thank you. I, I, I love hearing the artist's insight. Um, who else would like to speak about their work a little bit? I saw another person's hand up before. Or a question for Karen. One of the things uh, Eileen and I have, oh, oh, who else? Okay, hold on. Uh, she, I think you have to unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself? Yes, Amy? hi. There you go, good. There you go. I'm Amy Broderick, and this is this is George, one of my children. Uh, I want to say first thank you to everyone uh, who assisted in organizing the show, and what a treat it is to see everyone and see everyone's work. And uh, Adrian, I thought that your description of your piece, the photo itself, they are incredibly moving. And I was inspired by these times in a comparable way, but maybe at the opposite end of the spectrum going from the large scale and the divine down to the very personal and the immediate. And especially in these times when time stops existing of taking note of the very tiny ways in which we measure progress. And specifically in the way our hair grows, in the way my children are growing, even while time never seems to advance for the rest of us. And specifically in the photograph prism, how the, the sun's rays at a certain time each evening come through the window on our front door here in South Florida in such a way that the light refracts and bounces rainbows just all over the front room of our house. And so it became a way of marking time each evening when rainbow time would arrive it became a way of uh, us advancing the rhythm of our day. George very patiently posed for that photo. It turned out just right. Um, and it was, uh, as Karen pointed out, just this way. And in that photo too, it's an issue of how the tops of my children's heads, as they get taller, the tops of their heads become harder to see. 
uh, as they start to outgrow me, but definitely these ideas that tiny moments of intimacy, beauty, and calm can be had even in these times when uh, each day seems to blend and bleed into the next rather indecipherably. Amy, I have a question for you um, because you have been part of our conversation as we were installing the show. But first, I want to congratulate you for being our first place winner again. Thank you so much. And congratulations on having two pieces in the show. Uh, one of the things I find fascinating, both in my own work and in hanging the works of other people, is how they decide to present their work. And Amy's print is probably what three inches by three inches maybe it's about, it's about three and a half by three and a half and part of the motivation for that is uh this very format through which we are experiencing one another right now the uh i live in south florida because i am a professor here i have been teaching exclusively online for the past year and so, and even while George and I were watching uh, today, and as I work with my students, I am always leaning into the screen because these experiences that are normal human scale, right now we're experiencing these uh, one inch by two inch thumbnails or, or comparably sized thumbnails. And so it is a response to this impulse that we have of, at times I find myself almost uh, bumping my forehead against my laptop screen as I am leaning toward uh, one of my students' pieces or leaning into uh, a conversation with a friend. And so this notion of a tiny image with a slightly wider mat and this idea that there is intimacy, but there is a, a plane or a degree of remove uh, that makes that intimacy maybe a harder work to achieve. I think the size of it alone invites the viewer to engage in a more intimate way, just um, response to get closer to the image. But thank you very much. Um, I I'm hoping that some other people might want to speak about their work. Thanks so much. Really? This is great. Who's Was there someone else? Yeah, she raised her hand. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Johanna. Um, I thought I would just uh, lighten things up a little bit about my image called the smokers. Um, I've lived in Anchorage, Alaska for 33 years. Um, and last year I moved to Fairbanks for a year. <clears throat> I consider myself a nature photographer. I live in nature. I don't do portraits really, but um, when the pandemic hit, um, well in Fairbanks, I lived in a dry cabin. So no running water, that sort of thing. And when the pandemic hit, I was so isolated in Fairbanks because I didn't know anybody. I moved back home to Anchorage um, three months before my year was up. And I had to rent an apartment in, in Midtown Anchorage before I could get into my condo on the east side, which is next to the mountains. And I literally was just in the right place at the right time. We had just gotten our first snow in October. I mean, just a little bit of snow. and. The story behind this is every afternoon after work, um, you know, I worked it from my, I work from home <clears throat> and I would go out onto my deck and look down, but every afternoon like clockwork, um, a husband and wife would, would get into their truck and roll down the windows. The windows are actually rolled down here and they would smoke a joint and every day like clockwork it happened uh, in the afternoon and the smoke would walked up to my my third level apartment and it was just they were really nice people i loved them and it was just a a, a great you know it was one of those things it was good timing and um so that's what that's what that is it was a very quick moment in time you know um on my iphone that's a great story <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. A whole different experience now in looking at the image. Pamela. Okay. Uh, this is John Weiss. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Uh, where's? Can, can you hear me? I my um, photo was there, but can you hear me? We, we can't hear you. See you. Yes. Okay. Yes, we can hear you, and we'll put your your image up on the screen. This is the first one, Eileen. Mm -hmm. It was the first one. Yes. So please go ahead. Okay. Um, 
this image was part of a day that really spoke of the pandemic in different ways. I actually um, had dropped a photo off at one of the galleries in Manhattan, and I was walking around looking for some place to have an outdoor meal. And there was this, you know, lovely place. And this woman was our wait person at the place. And as you can see, she would definitely attract attention by the way she hung her mask and her hair, though the rest of her outfit was more typical of what you know a white person would wear, but her top, her face was very, you know, alluring and really out there. And um, so when she came near the table, um, she just was totally oblivious that I was taking a photo, or she might really be used to it, because it, it didn't interfere with her expression or where she was looking, etc. But um, you know, I did like the idea of she wasn't only covered with her mask, but the idea of coverage in different ways where one of her eyes was looking out at you. Um, but the particularly interesting part was when we were um, with a friend and we were sitting at this outdoor cafe and all of a sudden we heard like a lot of whistles and bells and people shouting, you know, walking, I forgot if I was on 2nd Avenue or 3rd Avenue, walking by and we couldn't imagine, you know, what was going on at the time. And then someone ran to us and said, I won't say who it is, but they, the election results had just come out. So there was this big parade, like right next to us. So it was like an amazing combination of a lot of things going on and felt like sort of the center of the universe with all that. But, um, you know, and I look at her, like her eye is looking forward. It's like all knowing and um, looking at the events of the day and not also being, um, looking inward. She doesn't look like she's really totally engaged in what she's seeing, but in what she's feeling and also in what she's hearing. So I just wanted to give that background information. It's great to hear the backstory. Thank you very much. Uh, Natalie, uh, do you have your hand up? I do. Uh, I'm, I'm Natalie McGuire. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. The image uh, danger is actually warning humans of a cliff and by looking at that image, that danger sign was put um, probably about 20, 30 years ago. You can kind of see how the bark is slowly enveloping it. And I kind of found it more humorous and ironic. And it did tie to the pandemic. I did take it earlier this year. Uh, originally, I took it a few years ago in color. And I went back, I actually have one of my digital cameras converted to infrared. So this is actual digital infrared photography. That's why it gives you that ghostly iridescent, almost that 3D look. Um, and all I do is I do a lot of it in the camera. And then I go into Photoshop, correct the white balance and bring it back and do my normal tweaking. But that one I just love. And actually I've seen about four or five of these danger signs that are just being enveloped by these, I believe it's an oak tree. So I know it's a simple shot, but it's just, you know, it spoke volumes this year. Um, and this is just one of those beautiful, right off the Mississippi, we have a lot of parks within the city. We're very blessed here with our park system. I can go outside my door, walk six blocks and I've got a bluff view of downtown St. Paul. I've got a view of, you know, the South Metro, um, further south of me. I mean, I've got the Mississippi River. So uh -huh. it's amazing for what I have that's less than a mile from my house, you know, six, ten blocks. So that's how I spent my pandemic. I still have a full-time job and I just, I needed to be outside. I have a dog um, and I just, I needed to be outside. I can't, I don't know how you people did it in New York where you couldn't leave the building because I would have been one flying off the railing or something so I, I feel for you guys but that's the image and what I took I actually found it more humorous uh, I, I, I want to uh, just uh, input something right here that I didn't say before and uh, you'll you'll see when we do the live walk around uh, Karen uh, Kleindance was not only our juror this time 
But uh, this time she also became our, cur our curator. Normally when we hang a national show, we decide how the show is hung. But Karen was very specific in how uh, she viewed the pieces talking to each other. So the order of the slide presentation that you saw is how we hung the show. So when you, and thank you, Karen. So when we walk around uh, and you actually see the installation, I, I think you might find interesting what your pieces are next to as well. Uh, it's a beautiful show. Uh, we've gotten just great feedback. Uh, who, would, who would like to say something else too? We have, some, we have some people here who have been in shows before too. I know Kimberly Bass, you've been in um, several and there are other people as well. Um, so please just uh, give us a hands up if you'd like to speak about your work or if you have a comment uh, or question for Karen, or if you're not in the show and you just like to make a comment about the show, we welcome hearing from you. Uh, uh, Marissa, hi. Welcome. It's just on you. What? That's Carmen. No, Marissa is over she, here. Sharifa Hand. Uh, Marisa, or Mar is there a Marissa too? Oh no, we're good. Okay, go ahead, Marisa. Hi, I missed the commentary beforehand because I was caught up elsewhere. So I don't know how or why mine were chosen. Um, and mine were not taken during the pandemic. It seems like that was the theme. I didn't think that that was a criteria. So. <laughs> uh, just, um, no, uh, Karen, uh, Marisa's works were uh, the garlic scape and then the, uh, how do you pronounce the, tatim, how do you pronounce Tatema. it? Tatama? Tatama lunch. Yes. Yeah. Um, so could, would you like to tell us a little bit about those images, Marisa? Sure. Well, um, garlic scape was one of numerous photos that I took uh, two summers ago it was my first time at gardening see. and planting yes. garlic. Um, I was primarily growing it so I can cook with it, not realizing I was going to get these beautiful scapes of garlic that um, really presented me with these swirls and curls and I didn't realize I was going to get such a beautiful subject out of them. Some of them I took outside. I, I started out with taking them without a black background and then graduated to bringing out the, a black background so it was much easier to then play with the light. Um, and I just I, I just love the way these danced. I mean they look they take on a human form. Some of them do. Um, I know Pam saw the whole series and I, I, this is one of, I just love this series of mine. They're just, they, they're beautiful. It's they're gorgeous. Serious. They're the light and the dark, you know, the contrast between the light and the dark was just, I thought they were beautiful. Beautifully done. And this was just one of many. And then the Tatema lunch, the uh, man, um, yeah. that, um, I don't know, are you going to bring that one up, Pam? We're pulling it up. Oh, thanks. Up. Nope, not that one. We're almost there. Uh, <laughs> then. Go back up. Go down. There we go. There it is, number 11. Okay. Um, that was taken on a trip to Ethiopia. Um, I traveled there with a group, a nonprofit group who um, supports several schools there. And this was taken during a lunch where the village was thanking us for the work that's been done there. Now this is taken in a hut that maybe has just one door. So it was almost, almost pitch black in there. And there happened to be a bit of light on him and I just, the little bit of light that was on him, contrasting with the dark background, just made for this beautiful portrait. I did have to work a lot on this. I will admit that it needed a lot of, <laughs> it needed a lot of work for it to come to look like this because while it looks like there's a large ray of light on it, there really wasn't. So it was, it was manipulated quite a bit, but I just love the painterly effect of it. And it shows, I mean, it just, this is what life in Ethiopia is like. It's very simple. 
Um, this is a typical dinner that they have, a typical lunch. It's spiced meat and this injera bread and you eat with your hands. So this was part of a huge uh, experience for me, a very eye-opening experience for me, the way people in other parts of the world live with so little but are so grateful for what they have. So that's what this one is about. Thank you, Marisa. Um, th this uh, brings to mind something else that I did want to mention. Uh, when Karen judged the show, when she looks through the show, it's done blind. She has no idea who the whose yeah. work is whose. So um, I thought about it now because Marisa is one of, I think we have three, either are there three or four people, three people who have two pieces in the show. And the two pieces that Marisa has and the other people are quite different from each other. Um, so Karen actually did not know who the pieces belonged to until after everything was done and said. And when we asked her if she would please do commentary and she graciously said she would, we sent her all the work with the names. So um, did you wanna to speak to anything about that at all, Karen, about like, blind judging or? Oops. I was actually surprised. Um, I mean, so, I mean, there were two artists I knew, you know, like the, um, the first place uh, Amy's work and, and um, Glenn's work. I, I, you know, definitely wanted to select two images of theirs because I um, was just really thought that those two really, you know, spoke to each other. But I was really surprised to find some other artists had two images in the show because they were, you know, very different from each other. So that was a kind of a fun surprise. I think it speaks to the quality of the work that you were looking for too. That's wonderful. Uh, who, Carmen? Hi. Hey, great, thank you. Hi, I'm Carmen Schaefer. Um, a beautiful show, thank you. Um, my piece was, um, I had found myself in the position of having to travel back and forth from Rochester to Port Jefferson, Long Island, uh, uh, every two weeks. So it was like an eight or 10 hour trip. So I decided to document that trip. And I mainly do drawings, but I decided to use uh, a digital camera because of its, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm not sure about unmuting the because of my, because it's um, of the ease of using it at, while traveling. And also it's, you know, kind of documentary aspect of photography. And because it was so arduous every two weeks, I wanted to see it rather as a, um, a, a transition, a metaphor for change, for something happening, um, a good coming in the future. So I tried to document that. So, you know, so that was um, a series that I did and it was all one trip. So that was pretty much the story of my piece. I love the warmth in this piece that comes through. Thank you. The beautiful ambient light. Thank you for sharing. Um, who, let's see, who else would like to speak about their work? Um, Kimberly, Kimberly, welcome. You're still in Texas. Thank you. I am still in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Um, I love the show. I think that these are fantastic, great choices for sure. Um, I love the way it's curated. I think it flows really, really beautifully. Um, to speak to my piece, I've, I wanted to try something a little bit different this year. Um, so mine is a mixed media piece. I'm really interested in... Um, fibers and materials. Um, and I've been looking into weaving. And so this was kind of an attempt of weaving photography, um, both physically and with kind of concept. Um, this is a old barn that for years and years and years, our family has traveled past. And so I've kind of watched it decay over the years. Um, and every time we see it, it kind of goes away a little, little more. Um, but to me, there's a lot of personal story and history behind it. Um, and so I kind of wanted to honor that with um, the encyclopedia pages behind it. So some of them speak to 
um, the plants that are native to the area. Some of them speak to arithmetic that it would take to um, create a structure. And then down in the bottom left corner, I kind of drew in um, a new window. So that's kind of my attempt at a new story and a new life to the structure. Thank you, it's fascinating. This is quite different from some of your other work that has been in our shows. And congratulations yeah. again to you and to, to oh, everyone. Thank you. This is quite different. Oh, okay. Um, who, I, I'm I, this is awesome. I love hearing uh, everybody's insights. Some of you talking about your techniques. Some of them just, you know, content. Um, who else? Anyone else that we haven't heard from yet? Or is there anyone who would like? Uh, Peter, please go ahead. Um, well, yeah, thank you very much. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Karen and Pamela and everyone for putting the show together. It's, it's great. Um, so my image was the one of the, the two whited rocks. Um, yeah, and so this was from a trip I took uh, last year, just before everything kind of shut down. Yeah. Uh, so over in Japan. Um, not, not the easiest place to get to, so it's, it's probably about a two, two and a half, three hour train ride from Kyoto. Um, so these, uh, these two wetted rocks, um, yeah, it's just a beautiful place. It's part of a, a Shinto uh, mm -hmm. shrine that's on the coast of Japan. Um, and it really is this beautiful, kind of magical, kind of very spiritual place, which um, you could easily spend hours and, and probably days and just, just kind of taking everything in and just kind of admiring the, the beauty. And it really does look as, as beautiful and serene as, as it is here. Um, they say that these two rocks represent two of the, the major uh, deities in Japanese Shintoism. Uh, and the, ro the rope here, um, it, it's, it's huge. I, I think it weighs something like two tons or more. Yeah. Um, but it's said to represent the, the wedding of these two, these two deities. Um, and at the top of the larger rock, there's this thing called the Tori Gate. Um, and it's again, it's it's. I imagine it's it's a very big structure, um, and these, these gates they're scattered all over uh, Japan. But they're they're said to represent sort of the the transition between the earthly and the spiritual realms. So every time you see that, it's supposed to represent a passage from from earth into the the next the next realm, whatever that may be. So um, I have a, a series of of these rocks. Um, this is one of them, which is why it's called Frame Three. Um, I have a few other images also as well, but this is, um, yeah, the, it's fortunate enough to get out uh, halfway across the world before everything kind of shut down, and <laughs> I'm very anxious to get back as soon as everything opens up. Peter, I have a question for you, because uh, this is, again, a stunning image. Uh, where were, like, what, where were you, like, physically when you took this to get this perspective? Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, so, um, I, for this one, it's actually, you can get up pretty close to these. Um, so there's these, these two stacks. I think at a low tide, even the water comes back. So you can even, if you wanted, or if you were able to, to, to walk past over the fence, there's a, there's a fence here that separates, um, you know, so you, people can walk out there, but you could probably walk out onto the stacks at low tide. But um, that was probably, I don't know, maybe about, uh, 50 yards away. Well, I can imagine, for me, I would imagine this would be a very spiritual uh, experience. It is, yeah. I love this place. <laughs> I want to get back there too. I just like it kind of the first time I saw this image, I thought we were treating it as a model. It's a good of a model. You know, like a tabletop model, like something like Hollywood would be. Could you hear that, Peter? Oh, no, sorry. I, I, I couldn't really hear what the question was. Uh, uh, Eileen was saying that when she first saw the image, and by the way, Eileen is the person who created this wonderful slideshow. Um, she was saying when she first saw your image that she saw it as almost a, a model, a tabletop model that might have been done for some kind of a, a movie or. Yeah. I had to Google the place. Yes, she actually Googled the place to find out what was going on. You, you uh, piqued her curiosity. Wonderful. Yeah, people people have asked that as well. They said, "Is it you know, are they little tiny rocks or?" But no, it's, it's huge. It's about a two-ton rope. 
Yeah, it, it's interesting how ambiguous the perspective can be when we don't have anything for comparison for, to create a sense of scale. Yeah. I love that, that you can, you can really play with people's brains with that. So thank you very much for sharing. Um, this is great. This is fantastic. I love hearing from the artists about your work. Uh, who would, anyone else like to speak? I haven't yet. I see someone thinking about it. Come on, let's go for it. <laughs> yes, you know, I'm looking at you. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. She's on mute. You have to unmute, dear. There you go. Hi. Um, Hi. My name is Carol Guerrero. I'm from San Francisco. And um, my image is um, El Boxeador, the boxer. Um, and unfortunately, we weren't able to sign on immediately. So. Um, First of all, thank you to Karen because your commentary was beautiful. I missed um, I missed the information on or you know your commentary on my piece, but I thank you so much for for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, the El Boxeador is an image that I took in 2018 in Cuba, um, and it's wonderful. It, it was thank you. It was, um, it's at the Rafael Trejo um, boxing gym, which is actually a fairly well-known boxing gym, even outside of Cuba. Um, I think that it, I think there have been um, Hollywood stars who've gone down there to, to be trained. And which is really interesting because when you see it, it's very sparse. It's just, um, it's just a boxing ring. The surrounding buildings, you know, women are hanging their laundry out the sides looking down into the ring um, and I went in I went to Cuba in 2018 and I returned in 2020 um, and um, both times I went um, to the boxing gyms um, it's just a very uh, I'm very interested in in the role that sports plays in Cuba because it's a it's a huge thing um, baseball being uh, one of the big ones but boxing for for Cubans um, they have, I believe, the most medals in Olympic boxing that there is. And um, there's no professional sports. So no one is paid to do this. So, um, and uh, young, young boys all the way up through um, men, you know, training for Olympics do, uh, there's no fee, they don't pay to do it. It's, it's all free. So when I went to the gym on this particular time, they were, they were in the middle of a training class. It was, it was a, a bunch of people training. And um, although there were, there were more defined boxers, in fact, one who had done, who had, um, who had I believed um, gained medals and the trainer was an Olympian. Um, this particular gentleman um, just caught my eye. And so this was after they had done warm up and before they had, they were putting on their boxing gloves and I just kind of focused on him and he was in the middle of wrapping his hands um, before and he was just so graceful. I just was really, really drawn to him. And so that's kind of the, the story behind the image. Was he aware that you were photographing him? Um, it's kind of hard not to be because I'm there with my camera, but um, <laughs> they were really just going about their business. Um, so yeah, just documenting uh, the training session is what I was doing. It's a stunning image. He looks like he's in his own place. Yeah. Definitely. So th thank you for sharing that. Uh, and Karen, please summarize what she said. Pardon me? And Karen summarized to her what she missed. Um, but, but is there anyone else who would like to uh, uh, speak who hasn't? And again, please, I encourage you. I see some of our other uh, gallery artist members from Photo Photo Gallery uh, who uh, I would encourage you, please, if you have questions or comments about the show, I'd love to hear from you as well. I promise not to pick you out. Okay, <laughs> Alan, go ahead. Thank you. Alan is one of our gallery artists here at Photo Photo Gallery. Where is it? Okay. One second. You hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's unmuted. Okay. I'm duly impressed. Um, my name's Alan Richards. I'm, uh, I live here in Long Island on the, uh, on the North Shore of Long Island. And I'm part of this gallery. This is quite a show. Uh, I've learned a lot, actually. Um, I, I was, 
I, I am under the opinion that uh, bigger is better. And when I heard the commentary that Amy had made about the little pictures, uh, the three by three and a half by three and a half, I was I said, whoa, this is uh, this is something that I don't that I haven't really considered because I always want to make it bigger. <laughs> but I think that uh, having uh, having a, fail, a relatively large frame relative to a very small and interesting picture, it taught me a lesson. And uh, so from now on, you're going to see a lot of small pictures of gigantic frames. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the, uh, but the, the rest of the photography is just incredible. I haven't, uh, uh, I see a lot because I've been part of a lot of groups in the area. And uh, this stuff is just fantastic. So, and that's about all I have to say. Thank you, Alan. Uh, is there anyone else who is? Uh, you don't have to be visible. We could just uh, uh, hear you if you're if you're on a phone and you'd like to chime in uh, to ask any questions. Uh, again, while you're thinking about it, let me uh, uh, let me share with you again that in addition to this wonderful exhibition being here in our gallery. Uh, you can also see it on our website. Um, you can see it, uh, I, I will periodically post many of the images, all of the images eventually on uh, our Facebook page. Uh, Eileen will also be putting together a presentation for YouTube um, based on what we've done today and on the slideshow. So there's lots of different opportunities for you to see the work. Um, I do social media in addition to being the president. So uh, you'll see um, your works on um, our Instagram page as well. So uh, please check back with us. Um, okay, any, anyone else? Uh, Paul, do you wanna do a walk around? Excuse me, sure. Yeah, he's, gonna, he's setting up so that we can give you a little bit of a live view. Um, at four o'clock today, our gallery will be open for uh, limited entry. And given the size of our gallery, we allow a total of 10 people into the gallery at one time, and that includes us, the gallery sitters. Uh, we follow all safety protocol, including temperature checks, and we have a, 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 a contact tracing you know, form that you fill out, very brief. Uh, but uh, our, our goal is to get people back in the gallery to feel safe about coming here and to share work firsthand. I mean, it's, it's awesome that you can see the work online, but uh, my own personal feeling is that there's nothing like being up close and personal with the real thing. Um, so, uh, We're getting there. Hold on. okay, Paul is just about set up here. And again, if you have any uh, questions for Karen, for me, for oh, yeah. any of us, please, let us know. I'm so I'm I I am thrilled beyond. Are you about ready? Almost. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Okay. A few technical problems. I know. Um, I, I will uh, say also once uh, I do this all the time. Whenever there's people who have work in a show. And I'm like, oh, wow, I have to see more. So many of you, I've gone to your websites. I've gone to your Facebook pages. I've become Facebook friends with many of you because I want to see more work. Um, okay, Paul is just about ready to do a little walkthrough of the gallery. Here we go. Yes, it is. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna walk with Paul to tell you whose work it is so you can see how it's set up. Uh, Paul, let me get behind you. Okay, the first piece we see here is by Joan Weiss, and it's looking ahead. Joan is actually from Jericho, so she's local. So let's just scan on that. Uh, and then our first place winner, um, Amy Roger. This is Prisoner. And if you can step, stand back a little bit, Paul, you can see the two of these together that she has. Uh, and this is that three inch um, uh, size print. But can you hear me, folks? I'm away from the microphone. Can, excuse me. Can everybody hear me okay? Just give me a high sign. 
Okay, awesome. Okay, so Paul, if you want to just keep walking. Um, yes? Okay, I can't read that. Oh, okay. All right, so we're just going to do a, a walk through here, and uh, I don't have all the names right now, but Paul, if you just want to just kind of casually stroll down, and if anyone wants us to stop at any point, oh, Paul, stop here. Yeah, this one, uh, this is uh, by what? Erica Cespedes. Am I pronouncing your name correctly, Erica? Okay, this one is... Uh, this is, well, Erica, you want to talk about the substrate and how it's put together? Yes, sure. Um, Thank so you. <laughs> this piece uh, is a triptych and it is printed on aluminum. And the funny thing about this piece, a lot of people think it's very sexual, but actually it's not. I had recently had my baby and I was very unhappy with the way my body was looking at the time so I start to um take photos of it in little pieces almost like a puzzle trying to put myself back together and these three pieces just um flowed together when I was trying to put my whole body in one large um puzzle I guess and trying to print it I was originally trying to print my entire body in smaller um, four by fours, but then it occurred to me like, well, maybe I can just do three large main parts of my body instead of trying to put myself together. Um, and it worked out just fine. And I'm super happy with the way it uh, just flows throughout. The soft satiny finish that's uh on the piece is just perfect. It's it's uh, beautiful. Uh, Paul, we're, we're just going to keep walking through. And if you would like to say anything about the work, folks, um, please unmute yourself. Um, just want you to see a little bit about how the pieces are next to each other. And you could just keep, just walk slowly, Paul. That'd be great. Okay, sure. Um, I will say, Karen Kleindens, I have to, we have to especially thank you. This was absolutely the easiest show to hang that we ever hung because the um, arrangement in the show was predetermined. We had decided by what, how Karen had uh, curated her selections and it just made sense to put the work up in the way that she saw the pieces speaking to each other. Oh, that's okay. All right. Okay, so um, again, there are 30 pieces in the show. Uh, our gallery hours, should you be making uh, close by, uh, we are closed on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. We're open on Thursday from um, 12 to 4 and on Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you are going to be in the area and those hours are inconvenient for you, uh, please don't hesitate to call. You can email me. I think any correspondence that you've gotten from the gallery has my email on it. It's uh, walderbitoptonline.net. It's easily found. And uh, we'll be happy to make arrangements to meet you here if you would like to see the show. Also, if you have, um, in keeping with our social media distancing, or excuse me, our physical distancing, um, if you have a larger group of people that you would like to come and uh, like to bring to see the show, please tell us ahead of time and we can arrange a special day for you to come um, where we can still keep the, the number of people in the gallery limited, um, but that you, know, you would be able to see the show. So, okay, thank you very much, Paul. We'll go back to our regular screen. Uh, Karen, uh, did you wanna add anything else? Happy. 
Um, no, I, I just want to thank you. And uh, the installation looks really wonderful. And um, it's always, um, you know, it's when you see um, images, um, especially when you're during the show and you're only you know, seeing them online, you don't really get a sense of scale or what the prints are like. So it's really nice to be able to look through the gallery and see what the, what the physical objects look like. Um, the physical photographs, because I, I also think that um, it's important to see them as um, these physical things rather than something so transient online. So, it, um, you know, thank you everybody to, who submitted such great work. Um, it was really tough making a decision about what to include. And I'm, I'm very happy with the way that um, except, you know, the exhibit looks and flows together. Thank you very much. Have to do a little bit of a plug for our next shows coming up in case you're interested. Uh, after our national, uh, we have our best shot winners. Uh, each year we hold the best shot winners competition or, or your best shot competition. That is a push pin show. And uh, last year we had 156 images that were on our walls. It was incredible. Uh, from those 156 images, we selected two winners, and a year later, those two winners has many solo shows in our gallery. Those many solo shows are coming up next. Tony Monaco and Susan Tiffin were our winners last year. So please check our website, check our Facebook pages, and um, the prospectus uh, is always uh, advertised there. And we would love to see your images there too. So anyone have anything else? To... That's the show coming up, the one after the next competition. Right, the next show is the, is the winners and best shot winners. The and then our competition, our best shot competition is in April. April. So you've got plenty of time. Um, and again, all the details will be online. So thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. This was our first experience in Zooming from our gallery and I'm just like overjoyed. So uh, Paul, okay. And Eileen, she's probably, she's gonna come over in a minute. She's, she's waving. She's waving. <laughs> so uh, thank you again very, very much guys. This was awesome. Have Pam, a good day. Thank you. Pam, thank you for fixing the glass on my piece. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're Pam, welcome. My glass we had to. shipping and she fixed it for me. Thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you uh, that, 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 that thank you also goes to the Huntington Art Center. They like saved the day. <laughs> so that was awesome. So, okay. Thanks so much, everybody. Please have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. Stay, stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye.